the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is that cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. Have a good trip. Thank you. Very kind of you. Thanks. Oh, oh, pardon me. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr. Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no. Should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, or so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have. Although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time, but you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present, and especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just... I I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. The little label on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading the vicarage in the mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. 
The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partou is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No. We are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I travel to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zelda. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward. And since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young, but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. Did you notice anyone else? What about the doctor? I notice that you've asked me about everyone, except for the inspector who went in the direction of the freight car a few minutes ago. Isn't that the Frenchman who made his name when he caught the raven? I wouldn't quite say caught. Well, shot. Why don't you ask me about him and my theory about what he's doing here? I don't think we should discuss Inspector Legrand's investigation in public. Legrand, right. That was his name. Will he save the day again? Or will you, Constable? As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seemed so... Eager. I... <laughs> it's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally, he would offer them discreetly after dinner. <laughs> 